quite a good scene, isn't it? One man crazy, three very sane spectators. Believe it or not, this piece of white plastic will become a robot's arm. In labs across the world, we are creating advanced robots like this. They are developing so rapidly. It's like the arrival of a new species. What has taken humans millennia robots have achieved in just decades. They look like us. My name is Erica. Move like us. And now, they're beginning to think like us. We are going to become gods. Period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. But if you're going to interfere with me, becoming God, we'll have big trouble. Then we'll have warfare. And you kill me, I'll kill you. The thing that's impacting all our lives is astonishing. Four technologies are converging. The rate of progress is expanding in directions that are staggering. See, computers are incredibly advancing, not only in terms of size of memory and speed, but in the energy per operation. As computers continue to advance, and the software also continues to advance, they predict a day where the uh, computers will be equivalent or exceed the uh, capacity of the human brain. The next great American project, and that's what we're calling the Brain Initiative, is the whole area of artificial intelligence, uh, or some people would express it the simulation of cognitive behavior, but the, the fact that software can learn. Now, as humans, we can identify galaxies light years away, we can study particles smaller than an atom, but we still haven't unlocked the mystery of the three pounds of matter that sits between our ears. And the Brain Initiative will change that by giving scientists the tools they need to respond to our thoughts. There are contracts being granted in research to, uh, to have goals such as a, a, a squad leader being able to communicate with his team by thought. Underlying all of this is information technology. The fact that our computers are twice as fast next year as they were the year before. And that enables artificial intelligence, robotics, synthetic biology, digital medicine. People who have been tracking these four technologies are familiar with this tide of interest in the direction of transhumanism. In fact, every technology that I think we know about is at the horizon of, it, of the information sciences. The real breakthroughs in microbiology are in the information sciences. The real breakthroughs in subatomic particles is in the information sciences. The information sciences that bounds our world. And the computers we've been using for the past 60 years have been amazing machines, but they've all been slaves to a program that's been pre-written. When you look at what the human brain can do, it's really amazing the way we can reason about things and think very deeply about things. But where we start to run into a wall is when we're faced with leveraging huge volumes of data. In order to push the boundaries of human cognition, we want to provide access to all of that data. IBM's chairman and CEO, Ginny Romatti, has called the coming times 
a new era in cognitive computing. The essence of cognitive computing to me, making computers actually more like biological systems, whether or not they're brains, but having that kind of fluidity where they, they respond and, and react appropriately. So you feel like you're dealing with another living thing, not, not a machine. So what has emerged here is a goal of what some people call transhumanism, trying to extend the ca capacity of the human being. Challenges or tasks of these cognitive computing systems is to facilitate or enable human cognition beyond these barriers. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. What most people don't realize is there's an arms race going on between the major powers to for the super soldier something that's beyond human that's the goal and that's that sounds bizarre only to the uninformed the world is on the verge of global change the speed of data transmission has increased by multiples of millions the rate of globally significant events and that of discoveries and crises is growing exponentially our civilization is like an uncaptained ship sailing on rough seas with neither chart nor compass, all the while moving faster and faster. The time we have to make the right decisions is shorter and shorter. We are facing the choice to fall into a new dark age, into affliction and degradation, or to find a new model for human development and create not simply a new civilization, but a new man. Throughout the course of history, there have been periods when mankind made rapid advances. And then there are those other, much more numerous times that remain rather unnoticed as transitory periods. Now, at the dawn of the third millennium, how will this age be judged by posterity? And more importantly, what form will that posterity take? And what kind of judgment will it be capable of? We are now becoming the objects of conscious design. And the implications of that are just enormous because we've gone, until now, we've been reshaping the world around us. And we can see how dramatically it's been changing. I mean, we've really res reshaped the landscape and we've built a society and altered society and changed everything that's external to us. But somehow we imagined that we were going to remain the same, that, there would, that we ourselves were not going to be caught up in this process. And that's not in fact true. We are going to remake ourselves. And it's very difficult to deal with because it will rip free all of the anchors that have until now told us who we are as human beings. This body is not sacred. The way we are is not some kind of God-given plan. It's really a pure random accident. We take two sets of genes and we shuffle them and something comes out. Sometimes it's a wonderful product, sometimes it has a hole in the heart, sometimes it has psychosis or uh, tendencies towards you know, extreme anger, uh, has addictive problems, can't concentrate, all kinds of de defects. To say, oh, that's normal, that's sacred, that's good, to me is rather absurd. It's just, it's random. There's not a plan there that we're thwarting. So genetic engineering seems to be one of the most moral things we can do. A single species is defined by the isolation of our genetics, reproductive isolation. But when you begin to take genes from different species to mix together all of the genetics that is available among all animals and also to design new alterations to the genetics, well, reproductive isolation really doesn't have much meaning anymore and so you can imagine all sorts of forms and that will evolve in the future in the future we will be able to sculpt our bodies like living sculpture our bodies could be beautiful electronic designs that shimmer prismatically in the light in the morning light it could change forms it could become a piece of marble 
on one hand and then totally mutate into some fluid type of luminescent snake-like quality. After all, the body is an extension of fashion. You can rearrange the human body and try to make humans fly even though humans are very heavy. And some mammals fly like bats fly, but they're much lighter. But it's an intriguing question because it brings up the issue of not just trying to take an injured human and returning them to normal, but taking a human and making them superhuman, making them go beyond. Our future is not to try and hold back genetic engineering, but to try and use it in a way that best serves us. If we can, if our children can be more intelligent and healthier and live longer lives through altering our genetics, why would we not want to do it? I mean, imagine if other children could live for two centuries and if you could only live for 80 years because your parents believed that it was improper to tamper with human genetics. You would not be pleased with that decision. The same thing if your IQ were a normal IQ and all of your classmates were much, much brighter because there had been sort of some biological or genetic manipulation that was possible. You'd feel very angry about this. The world is on the verge of global change. The speed of data transmission has increased by multiples of millions. The rate of globally significant events and that of discoveries and crises is growing exponentially. Our civilization is like an uncaptained ship sailing on rough seas with neither chart nor compass, all the while moving faster and faster. The time we have to make the right decisions is shorter and shorter. We are facing the choice to fall into a new dark age, into affliction and degradation, or to find a new model for human development and create not simply a new civilization, but a new mankind. We are shifting to a trans-human base. We've come out of a humanist time, and now we're redefining what it is to be human. Whether we like it or not, we're becoming cyborgs. We're becoming transhumans. We have the opportunity now to try to do things uh, better uh, than uh, nature has done. Why not have a stronger arm than we have? Uh, you know, why not be able to run faster? Why not be able to have uh, tougher skins? If you're going to replace your eye for vision, uh, why limit it uh, to visual? Why not give it the kind of vision a bat has? give it ultrasound. Could you imagine a Versace body design? Can you imagine a Terry Muller body design? These individuals, the late Versace was an incredible designer. What if he was a transhuman? What if he was an artist who really wanted to combine art and science? I bet his designs for a future body would be astounding. We really, really do want to violate human limits now and we're getting closer and closer to the ability to do it. It's what we want. Plans to allow scientists to create embryos that are part human and part animal are set for approval by the official regulator in Britain. These hybrid embryos are seen by the country's leading scientists as a vital step in the search for cures for diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. You could design your baby's features, would you? According to LA's Fertility Institute, prospective parents can select eye color, hair color and more. The technology is called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis or PGD. It was created to screen for disease, then used for gender selection. Now this clinic plans to allow parents to select physical traits. I would predict that by next year we will have determined sex with 100% certainty on a baby and we will have determined eye color with about an 80% accuracy rate. Dr. Jeffrey Steinberg is a pioneer in in vitro fertilization. I think it's very important that we not bury our heads in the sand and pretend that these advances aren't happening. Kirsten and Matt Landon used his clinic to select the sex of their daughter. Choosing other genetic traits intrigues them. Oh, yeah. A recent U.S. survey suggests most people support the notion of building a better baby when it comes to eliminating serious diseases. But Dr. Steinberg says using technology for cosmetic reasons shouldn't scare people away. Of course, once I've got this science, am I not to provide this to my patients? I'm a physician. I want to provide everything science gives me to my patients.
which leads to an obvious conclusion. We are the gods now.